You got one. It's pepper. Fresh, clean air of the West Coast. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just bowled round to Dan's to blag some wire because I'm wiring uh, a LED reversing light on the uterus there and I can't see anything out the back. It's pretty dark, the reverse lights are pretty crap, so I figure I'll put a, a uh, yeah, an LED. I put my spotlights on the front of it the other day and I cocked it up. I was drilling the relay into the side and I went punched through the side of the uh, mounting bracket and <laughs> right into the main wiring loom. And there were sparks flying everywhere and everything shut down, nothing worked. So I managed to fix it. I snipped all the wires and rejoined them and retraced the fuses back. And I managed to jimmy the fuse box up with some earplugs and some wire to get me back on the road and then order another fuse box from Australia. Dan, what do you got going on there? Uh, I'm distilling alcohol. This is a, a lovely still. So this is how we roll with this. So this is at the end of me brew, um, and I'm just what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just measuring how much alcohol is coming out of here, so that I know when to turn it off. So this is a hydrometer which measures the alcohol level. So it's about so this. So I really, at the moment I've been last last three times I've been getting at forty percent, and I'm thinking well I'm not going to shut it off at forty percent. There's still 40% alcohol coming out. And that goes into there, which is I've got carbon in there, which is a carbon filter, which will filter that out. Oh, no. She's a beauty. Yeah, that was pretty neat. So that's the carbon that goes in. So mate, most of that was 55%, and now there's a little bit of 35% in it. And if you come out here, into this part, where I've got my other still, but I'm not using that one at the moment, it's in here, and in this, in, this, in this bottle, this stuff here came out over, over 85%, so I watered that down to 40%, or right up there, watered it down, and then I put it into this machine, which is a uh, ceramic water filter with a carbon filter underneath that which is dropping out alcohol into here if you see that wobbling so that's going into there and probably in about two hours I'll have a uh, probably enough in that to whack out a uh, 40 uh, about 1125 mil bottle of 40 percent alcohol loves a bit of a tipple does Dan yeah and um, and then I see you've got your weed drying up there yeah that's me tobacco it's a, uh, the back is going up there, drying out up there. The, the, the weed that Dan smokes. That's right, this is me. Tobacco. It's tobacco like tobacco, weed. but it's different, so it's, you're totally allowed to grow your own. Because yeah, right. it's tobacco, not yeah. tobacco. And this is the good life, is that we're allowed to grow our own tobacco. Oh, you are allowed to grow your own tobacco. Yeah, and, and we're allowed to distill our own alcohol in New Zealand. So You're just you're not allowed to sell it. it? You just can't sell it. Oh, I see. Well, can, there we go. But you can give it away, I'm sure. But, yeah, it's just good stuff. So this stuff here was harvested about four weeks ago. And within two weeks, that stuff there come back on the plant. So at this time of year, it grows like nothing else. And I'm just about having to harvest it again, my plant. Are you going to soak it in bourbon or anything? I'm, I am actually going to do this one properly, which is called a, um, a, fermentation, a fermentation curing process which is uh, when this dries, so it's crispy dry, then I spray it with water and I put it into a container and it grows a mold on it. Yep. So once it, just as it starts growing a mold, then you take it, then you um, take it out because it's got all soft again because I've, I've uh, moistened it with the water. Yep. And it's been in the mold. And then what happens is you take the spine out because the plant's got a spine on it, 
down here. So you take that spine out, then you've got two leaves off the one leaf, yep. and you lay them together, and you do it the whole lot, and then you press that a couple of bits of wood, and you press that together with the clamps. You go from this height to that height, and then what happens is, and you leave that there for two weeks, and then you cut that fine, probably be good with a tobacco cutter, but I don't have one. So you cut that fine, yep. and then you put that in the oven, at 180 degrees for yep. exactly five minutes. And that kills the mold spore and it dries it out to tin to dry. And then you completely drench it with rum and wine, wine. And then you slowly dry it out naturally to its perfect texture and, and, and moisture. And then you've got lovely tobacco. So that's the fermentation curing process. Into the old shed, actually, it's looking pretty clean in here. A couple of rainy days, Dan had to tidy everything up, see? He couldn't remember where he'd lost everything in here. You chuck it in the shed and it just gets lost in the shed, so. I've got to find some wire. Just enough wire to go from my battery, down to the back of the truck, back up to the battery, back to the relay, and then I have me some reverse lights. This is the old corn cob pipe. <laughs> like the old cotton picking field days. Probably shouldn't say that. Not quite PC nowadays, is it? <laughs> and that's it. Smooth. Smooth. Clean air of the west coast. Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, it's gone out. Thank God for that. Oh, you got to get used to it, Josh. Jesus. Hey, okay. it's not good thing you're not a smoker. Hey. Uh, oh, I feel a bit wheezy after that. Actually. Uh, got any weed, bro? I'm going to smack some weed in it. Dan doesn't smoke me. Contrary to popular belief, me and Dan are not stoners. That's true. Whew. Oh, I Jesus, I need to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll just make sure that it's not broken in the middle of the wire with the old, uh, so that it's on the ohms. I'll join the water. Black. Those bloody things are shit. Can you see it? Nice. Give me a chance, Lord, he's gonna yeah, down trail me off the break then. Stuff it. <laughs> oh, 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 you won. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> Cheers, bro. <laughs> oh. Oh. Fire security, CAA. But oh, they gave me another second last morning. Pull that in real nice from there. Ooh! I know what you'll do, you'll mix that video that you're doing now into the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and make and it look like so you just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like she's in the bottle store. Jeez. Well, there was winners and there was losers. I think Dan might have been just, just in front at the end of the race there. But now we're going to make some, uh, this is how you make Bombay, Bombay Sapphire Gin. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> get it up, three quarter fill. You've got to get under the herb cupboard. So these here. Oh, juniper berries. Juniper berries. So, 
Mm, smell it. Mm. Oh yeah, so these these juniper berries are actually really good uh, on venison as well as as in gin. You can make a really nice juice with the juniper berries. Yeah, oh, that's gravy. Shy, 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 shy. Are you going to put whole feet on there too? Cardamom seeds. Are these cardamom. See that? Oh yeah. And I smell that. Then we've got lemon. So we've got lemon. We've got the hardy pito, the cardamom seeds. We've got the juniper berries. Right. And then we've got orange or mandarin. Doesn't really make much difference. That gives it a wee zest. And the other thing that you could use is uh, what was it? This one. It was um, stuff. <laughs> Put some stuff in there. It was uh, um, uh, something else. Here, anyway, we'll get back to that. Now the trick is, is not to overpower the flavour. So what we're going to do, one bottle, we're only going to put about three seeds of those in. Because you don't want to overpower the flavour because you're going to get too much. Three, three juniper berries? Three juniper berries, and we'll go three cardamom seeds. Oh, that's a lot of cardamom. Yeah, it is. All right, so maybe we'll go, yeah, we'll go three. And then, because that's a strong smell. Now, with the lemon, you've got to be very careful. You only want the very yellow part, not the white underneath. So when you, when you slice this, it's got to be very careful. Do we get the white underneath? That's nice, nice being careful there, Dan. Right. All right, next, take two. You ready? We'll just, we'll just very carefully take the top off. We'll just take a, the zest, the zest off this almost rotten <laughs> dandelion <laughs> or orange, or just to smash it up. Like that. That's all you need. No. So that goes in the bottle. I might have to get a funnel for that so I don't lose it. And where was that? Oh, yeah. Give it a go. Okay. No. Okay. All right. We'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Just jam it on with your hand. Okay, jam it on. Okay, okay, so it goes in there. So there we go. So we've got that, that there. And we've got dirty hands probably. And then we push the old uh, skins in there. It goes in there. Yeah. So this is a Hoapito, this is our pepper wood of the west coast of New Zealand, really beautiful. So we'll just chuck that in the water pestle and we'll give that a bit of a, a bit of a smash up. Smash that on there and life is good and that is beautiful. So that's, uh, then you leave that for probably about three or four days and you've got gin and already I reckon that those flavours will be starting. No, it's not really. It's going to take, take about three days before that actually comes right. Yeah, that's how you make gin. Easy. Hell yeah. Everything out of the slots after the party the other night. We just took it all in that and made gin out of it. I made gin out of it. Wow. I'm exhausted, it was a long night. I had to go um, all over the world delivering presents last night. Rip it open, that looks like a television. Sonny doesn't believe me, of course. What's the best thing in the whole stocking, Sonny? The hand sanitizer. I'll tell you, it's hard work being Santa. It's like a grill oven. Oh, this dude! Yes, he sends us heaps of stuff. I uh, see you as well, Jack. It's for all you boys. Look at that. Look how cool this is. Whoa. Nigel, that's bloody awesome, mate. Thank you so much. Charlie, this is yours. Going to be cooking some delicious steaks on that thing. Yeah. Nah. Fly rod. 
Cousins! Gonna salt brine the turkey. Salt, sugar, bucket of ice water, and preferably do it for 12 hours overnight. We forgot to do it yesterday. It's Christmas day already. We're just gonna brine it for a couple of hours and then roast it. Enough salt to float a potato, and then a bunch of sugar in there. I like to use pink Himalayan rock salt because normal salt's bad. Wait, what's the lasagna thing, Dad? Lasagna topper. What, what are you eating here, mate? Um, steak and Guinness. Steak and Guinness pie. Can I've I, gone for the lasagna thing. You want, the lasa you want my pie and no, the lasagna? No, 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 you have the pie. You have the whole oy, pie. Oy, 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 you have the whole pie. <laughs> the whole pie and the whole sausage roll. I love those things. Whoa. They're my favourite. First of all, I asked for the steak and Guinness and Charlie changed his mind. I want the steak and Guinness. Then I asked for the sausage roll. Charlie's like, I want the sausage roll. Right, so I got him a steak and a Guinness pie and a sausage roll. Got myself a lasagna topper. No, you got yourself that. And now Charlie wants my lasagna topper. That's a pretty good trade lasagna topper for a steak and Guinness pie. From the Pukiko Tea Rooms. Mmm. We're going fly fishing. First of all, we had to uh, tie the leader onto the main line using a nail knot. Nail knot. Sometimes if the rope skips over the end a bit, you just have to dress it. Slide her up. Make it nice and neat. Looks pretty good. And just set it so it doesn't slide down. Nice. Snip off the end. Two meters of our black magic leader. I'm going to tie a, a double surgeon's knot, and then, ta-da! Double surgeon's loop or surgeon's knot. I like to use one of the wife's hair ties to just go over the trace or leader to keep it uh, tidy. That magic tackle. Also, sell flies. I used to tie my own flies many years ago, but I've kind of lost the enthusiasm for it now. I might get back into it and show Charlie, because Charlie will probably pick that enthusiasm up. But for now, I just bought some hair and copper and some other nymphs from Black Magic. You can buy them in batches, so bags of it, and then you can have more flies than you know what to do with. Here we go. These are quite heavy, these ones. I first think they've got lead inside. The advantage of tying your own flies is that you can put varying amounts of lead core or copper core on them so you know exactly how heavy they are and you can weight them or make them less weightier depending on your requirements. Okay, let's uh, do you want to wind that up, Char, or go fishing? To the river. What? To the river. Oh, it's been a while since I've been in this screaming demon. Such an awesome boat. So much power, so fast, so much performance. Explosive. Pretty exciting. This is Charlie's first time fly fishing for trout. Snug up all right? Yep. Sweet. So what we're looking for is some cover, some deep water where the fish can retreat to, and plenty of current so they've got lots of food coming down. Oh, someone else has already been up here. Probably already been fished, bugger it. Yeah, a bit of a bugger. Someone's walked all the way down the edge of the creek and it'll back up along the edge today. So I think any trout that are here are going to be spooked already, which is a bugger. Tidal loops, tidal loops.
Charlie's got some great casting going on, but they've already been spooked, which is a bugger. The fly's landing right on top of them. Um, we were going to come up into the lake to have a fish, but there's on these flats, but there's way too much ripple on there, and we can't see the fish, so. We've resorted to spin fishing because we can't see anything. Yeah, that's it. One tazzy devil. Come on, Char. Hook it up, mate. No trout. If you want that kind of performance from your jet boat, go see Scott. If it's not performing at its peak, he can crank every little bit of power out of it. I'm just about to show you guys the camera. How much fun is that thing, eh? Real fun. It goes so much faster now, doesn't it? Yeah. Mean, all right? Should we bugger off, eh? It's really agile as well. Yeah, super agile, eh? Oh, yep. What do you got under there? Got some more Lego. Did you get more Lego? Dan dropped his lighter under the Pass porch, so we've Pass sent Charlie under on his annual treasure hunt. There's heaps of money under there, there's dollar coins and all sorts of wonderful stuff. Bits of Lego and pens and old dangers and spoons and knives. Oh, he found the keys. Brother, hand them on up. You got the keys. Pass them up. Pass them up. Yay. Oh, score. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's oh, still flashing. Oh, oh, yeah. What a score. It's like a red fairy. Welcome, welcome to Lake Mahinapua on the west coast of New Zealand, South Island. Today, we are taking the DNA boats. That's right, DNA boats. We're taking the DNA boats. Where was I? 630 XHT. Have to catch some perch. Oh, what you got? What you got? I got a big, um, big trout on. He's pulling up a fight. Don't break it. Just pull him in slowly. Pull him in slowly. Ah, oh, it's a bloody weed fish. He's peeling a lot of line. Ah! Oh. Got to reverse the boat back into the. Weeds and get the line. Hand down. There we go. Oh, that's tough. Holy shit. There we go. Oh, I heard so many good things about the perch fishing down Lake Mahuna Pur, but I tell you, fish under us. can't catch a fish for the life of me. What? There's fish under us. Might be a weed fish. Fish on! Nice, look at that little beauty. I seen him follow up there. Did you? All right, get him out, let's catch another one. Dad, you want to go forwards? Forward, forward. Yeah, that wind will take us forwards. Not when the engine's going back. And you're going too fast, you got one. You didn't even yank. Oh, hold on. You got one. Got one. Yep, bring it in. Yes, we can. No, don't. Oh, Just yes. want it. Right, come around. Oh, it's another one. Mm. Mm. We're out of here. Go home and cook these fish up. Perch are actually delicious to eat. Boys are slowly getting there. Another 25 perch fishing trips and they'll be filleting machines. The boys playing on our big new flash TV. Not happy, Kristen got the kids a TV for Christmas. Um, so we got five star meal, perch, 
part that we caught from a light fresh lemon pepper, smoked paprika, and chili flakes. You did a smooth burn. No. Oh, that smells glorious. Does it have heaps of pepper on it? No, hardly any. Look, all that black stuff's not pepper. Boy, you're boy, it's lemon. Spicy. I think it's done to get Is it yum? It's pepper. Right, I know we're going to get it. Ha, got him. Parties. It's pretty good. Spicy, salty, sweet. It's good. Good fish. Try it, perch. Get in you. We're just popping down here for a sneaky fish, but there's bloody footprints here as well. People are all over the place at the moment. We've just spied a monster trout over there, but he's on the other side of a really fast and swift deep river and we can't bloody get across. He is an absolute monster. Look at the size of him. We found another one. He's not half as big, he's just a little one, probably three or four pound, but he's actively feeding and he's kind of within roll casting distance. I'll just roll it out to him and see if he takes it. Oh! Did the fish see him? No, I don't think so. The bloody kayaker just went by, but he must have seen us and snuck down that other side. The fish is still there. Hopefully he hasn't been put off. He's a beginner kayaker, so he's taking the chicken lines. And we're going to use this... Um, we're going to use this fairly heavy nymph because he's in deep water and it's really fast flowing so hopefully this will sink down to where he is and if that doesn't work we're going to have to use a smaller one but we've only got a floating line not a sinking line so it's not ideal situations but we'll give her a nudge. No fish, the wind came up as soon as we got down there and just made it impossible to cast. So. We saw a couple of big ones though, we'll be back with a bit more of a plan with a pack craft so we can get across the river. Anyway, the Kaikoura. Any good? A bit better. We just found some wild cherries. Oh my, they're good. You must have got one that wasn't right. Oh, oh, they are a little bit better. They're still good though. I'm just going to keep eating until I get the shits. Made it to Wills and Jason Missy and their family are here too from DNA Boats. Pretty awesome. So, what a great way to finish the year. Will went fishing though, it's rough as guts out there. I'm glad I didn't go, there's big rollers coming in. Boys are giving me shit because I drove up to Will's house and didn't see the thousand cars parked in the paddock or the big flags or the glowing jellyfish or the all of the other shit that was there. They said, did you see the rave? I said, no, I didn't see any rave. Bloody hell, I must have been sleep driving. It's quarter past ten and we're going home. I'm also rude. <laughs> I think everyone's pretty tired. It's been a long week and we weren't prepared. I got up at five o'clock this morning and... Yeah, do well to make it to quarter past ten. Uh, about sums up 2020. Hooray! One you reckon, eh? Yeah. Alright, let's get that one there. Wow, that one's cool, isn't it? Charlie's casting's gone downhill. 
<laughs> quite significantly since he started fair call. He's only had about 20 minutes doing it. Just put, spotted a fish out there, so I'm going to go out and have a crack at it. And um, when Charlie gets his casting a bit better, then he can catch one. You'll yeah. Yeah, show Charlie how it's done. Maybe we'll give her a bash. It's quite windy and this line's real shit. It's a hundred dollar warehouse. Line. It's, uh, it's really hard to punch the line in the wind. Hey, uh, just bloody spooked. As soon as I put the fly in front of him, he saw it and phew, gone. I'm using five pound fluorocarbon too, so it's pretty thin, pretty thin trace. I think it's just the wrong time of year. Too many fishermen around and he's probably already had spinners and flies and stuff chucked at him for the last week, I'd say. Oh, there you go. All right, we've just seen another one down there. Is he still there? Yeah. yeah there he's still he is. He's sitting there feeding. He's feeding quite actively, which is good. Charlie's going to go down and have some flicks at him. I'm going to stand up here and kind of direct him where to go. He saw Charlie coming and took off and Charlie was behind him too, you know, below a 60 degree angle behind him and the fish still saw him, so they're really spooky at the moment, really spooky. Might have to go somewhere else. We're going to call it, they're just too spooky, can't get the fly anywhere near the blimmin' things, I suspect they've been caught in the last couple of days. I was cruising along, I found this old lease ring, and I'm going to take it home and turn it into a knife with some of the metal, because it's, Dad said it's really good metal for making knives. <laughs> that was it, 2020, down the tubes, thank Christ for that, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. I want to take this moment to express my heartfelt appreciation and gratitude. Uh, thanks to you guys, thanks to everyone watching this, who has enabled me to live the life of Riley and go on adventures, and while I'm adventuring, put a roof over my family's head and food on the table. It's been awesome, it's been a great year, it's been a shit year, as uh, you guys probably know. Everyone's had their ups and downs, so let's crack into 2021 and try and make it a perler, shall we? Why not, we'll give it a nudge. Anyway, uh, thanks very much, it's, it's New Year's Day, oh that was yesterday, it's the day after New Year's Day, it's the 2nd of January 2021, wow, uh, I don't really know what else to say, I should have written a speech but I didn't, so I'm just going to leave you with some lovely piano music from the man himself, Sonny Jim, Tally Ho. Mm -hmm.